What's going on? Drone to 1K podcast, season three, episode four. Coming at you right now, I am your host, David Young, founder of Drone Launch Academy. Again, very excited to be with you for another episode um, on this season. Uh, today with us, we have Spencer Boyd of Aerodrone Solutions. Um, Spencer is an awesome guy. I've gotten to know him over the last few months. Um, he originally joined some Drone Launch Academy courses. He got into our Drone to 1K course, and during that time, we were um, pitching something where it's like, hey, if you're the one of the first however many people to sign up, you get a free coaching call with me, and I think he was like number 17 or something, and I think we were doing the first 10, but he reached out to me that night on Facebook uh, Messenger and was like, hey man, I just signed up. I'm a veteran, I'm going all in on this thing, I'm really working really hard on my drone business. If there's any chance I could still get a coaching call, that'd be great, I tried to sign up, but there's a problem with my card or something like that. But he just came across a really genuine, nice guy, and I was like, sure, that's fine, we can still chat. So he and I talked, um, super awesome guy, uh, just kind of hit it off, and we've kept in touch. Uh, he worked through the course, um, he hit his 1K mark, and he even had a 10K month. And so I was like, dude, we gotta get you on the podcast, um, tell your story, talk about how you started and just your background and, um, you know, let people know what you did. So he said, sure, I'll come on and, and let's chat. So um, really excited to have someone who I didn't even know before. Um, and then, you know, they went through some of our courses and now they get to share um, kind of their journey and background with you. Um, and Spencer and I are, you know, now we're buddies. He lives actually about two or three hours away from me. So even yesterday we met up for we met halfway and met up for coffee and just kind of um, shot the breeze and talked to business and bounced ideas off of each other. So he's a great guy. I think you're going to enjoy this podcast episode. Um, before we dive into the interview, like always, just a few things I'm going to tell you about. Not going to take long. Um, number one, uh, if you want to get in on any of our courses, I have a special discount in a secret link just for podcast listeners slash viewers because now we're doing this on YouTube and other platforms. But if you go to dronelaunchacademy.com slash D1K, like drone to 1K, D, the number one, K, the letter K, discount with no S, um, dronelaunchacademy.com slash D1K discount. There's a bunch of discounts for some of our courses there. Um, again, that's not like posted anywhere really. Uh, just if you're listening or watching this, you can type that in manually and go there and get some a uh, couple discounts. They're not like humongous, but they're pretty decent discounts on some of our courses if you're interested in checking those out. If you don't care and you're just here for the free audio, free video, whatever, more power to you, no worries. Uh, just wanted to offer that to whoever's interested in that. All right, so got that. Um, next thing is uh, we're giving away free stuff. I like to give away free stuff. So I've mentioned this in previous podcast episodes. If you want to win a quick like coaching call with our podcast guest, um, or be entered to win some other freebies like a t-shirt, hat, coffee mug, or a free course, our Drones 101 course, um, click either, if you're watching this video, click the link below, or if you are listening to this on an audio platform, go to the email that kind of announced this podcast episode, should be a link there, and you can fill out, it's a one question, like, hey, what's the secret question, um, which one of these things is true from the podcast uh, guest story, um, just so we know that you listen to the podcast. So if you answer that correctly, you can tell us what prizes you want, and we're gonna pick five people every week. So this podcast is coming out on January 26th, so you will have until February 2nd, or basically the end of day, February 1st, to get in on that contest. So we're trying to reward people who are kind of fast movers and listen to our podcast and consume it every week. Um, so if that's you and you still have time, go find that link, answer that one question, uh, and get entered to win some free stuff, because who doesn't like free stuff, right? Cool, all right. Um, also, another way to get some free free swag is if you want to leave us a review. Go to Apple Podcasts, um, go leave us an honest review, what you think about the podcast, let us know if it's helping you. Again, that helps spread the word um, and let everybody know that this is a podcast worth listening to, if you think it really is a worth listening to. Um, screenshot your review, send it to me at david at dronelaunchacademy.com, and I'll shoot you a free shirt to say thanks for taking the time to do that. Also, if you're watching on um, YouTube, sorry, my voice just cracked. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, hit that like button, hit subscribe. Also, that helps us out too if you want. Also, if you think this sucks, you can just stop watching or stop listening, um, but we try to make this valuable for people. Last but not least, here's the interview. I'm gonna stop talking now. So that's all the good stuff. I'm just trying to give you guys stuff. Really, These are all just kind of giveaways, things for you. They're not like ads. We don't run ads on this show. We don't have other companies come in and pitch you stuff. Um, it's just us 
interviewing people. Sometimes we'll talk about our courses, but obviously there's no pressure to get in there. Um, just trying to bring you guys valuable content on um, audio, video now, and uh, we usually cut some of this stuff up for social media too to give you little snippets of the interviews. Um, so we're gonna be on LinkedIn. This, this will be on LinkedIn, YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, maybe one other place, but that those are the main places. So, um, and then all the podcast podcast platforms. So we really appreciate you listening. I love the feedback that we get from you all. So please um, take the time to do that. Shoot me an email. I love hearing from people. Um, the reason we put this out is for you all and the fact that you say, hey, this is really inspiring. This helps me. I get good ideas. I'm able to implement some of the stuff in my drone business. Um, so that kind of stuff. I'm like, oh man, cool. People like this. We'll keep doing it. So um, yeah, keep that coming. Really appreciate it. I think you know, we have tens of thousands of downloads on this podcast now, so it's really cool to see that and hit some of those milestones. So really appreciate all of you listening and being loyal followers. So the interview with Spencer Boyd starts now. All right. So welcome to the Drone to 1K podcast. We're in season three. This is our first live recording. Uh, so I'm here with uh, Spencer Boyd. Spencer, good to have you. Thank you. Uh, and for those of you who might be watching, I'm filming it in person this time because we don't have a, uh, a Zoom link to, to do the video. So we're, we're testing this method out. So hopefully um, this works well. It's kind of fun to do an in-person uh, podcast. So uh, Spencer, congratulations for coming on the show. I don't want to say congratulations, but thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> um, and why don't you tell me a little about yourself, your company, uh, just give us a little background. Yeah, definitely. So I'm Spencer Boyd. Uh, my company's called Aero Drone Solutions. I uh, recently started it just right before right when COVID happened actually it's kind of perfect timing <laughs> yeah crazy time um it's been interesting but uh was in the military for a while in the navy and um did some aviation background and then uh, eventually i decided to uh get out of the military and go to college and uh once i was in college i kind of found drones or kind of found me and I ended up doing military contracting for a few years okay. in the Middle East. Um, after that, with the Corona stuff, things have been crazy, and you know it's feast or famine with that kind of job. So, um, decided to you know start my own company here in the U.S. and not have to be gone all the time. And here sure. I am. Nice. So, yeah. how long ago were you doing military contracting stuff? So I was actually just there. I got back from Afghanistan in April. Um, oh wow! So like very recently. So recently, yeah. Wow. Yeah, pretty recently. So, so you just started your business here in the States in April? Um, I'd say it was actually early, early May. Early May. So yeah, it's pretty recent for you guys. Look, cause we release the, we release these usually pretty good ways after they're recorded. Cause we like to get 10 episodes and then release the season. But what is it? Mid August right now. So yep. May, June, July, August. So four months, right? Mm -hmm. Ish. Yeah. Ru take. Roughly. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you're already at the one K mark, which is pretty awesome. Right. Yeah. So that's hopefully inspiring to people out there who are maybe new or just starting out and they're like, oh, is this going to take forever? Because, you know, some people that come on the podcast, now, like, I don't want to mislead people. Obviously, it takes work. Mm -hmm. Some people come onto the podcast and they're like, it's going to be years before you see any significant, you know, but I, it's nice to have different examples of like, hey, you know, no, it can happen uh, faster. Right. Um, so it's cool. So talk, so let's talk about, well, first I want to know, <laughs> is there any similarities whatsoever to flying drones in Afghanistan to like your DJI drones that I, I guess you said told me earlier you fly like a Phantom 4 typically typically yes sir um yeah it's it's similar in how the camera works I'd say like it's you know more simplified with the DJI but um just like the you know the soft camera movements getting good at you know and smooth with the camera that that kind of helps but as far as like the flying yeah it's pretty Pretty, pretty different. different yeah. uh, were you flying like fixed wing UAVs for mm -hmm. the military? Yeah, yeah. It was a uh, Scan Eagle is the type of platform it was. Okay. That was okay. Flying, so. Cool. Yeah. That's, I mean, I'm sure it was, you know, you've got your own experience to draw from, but it's pretty cool to hear like, you know, flying drones for the military, at least for listeners, that sounds like, oh, that's cool. But I'm sure it was, you know, being away from home and being overseas, I'm sure it can kind of be, can kind of be tough. But yeah. Uh, but anyways, well, I appreciate you, you know, doing that. Yeah, definitely. Um, cool. So, so let's talk about, you know, you come back. Um, and one thing that's cool, I guess I didn't mention at the beginning of the podcast, but, um, you're, you joined in our drone to one K program. Um, and again, I'm not here to make this like a big commercial for like our course. We're still in the middle of like developing and everything. Um, but I just wanted to say that because I commented, you know, I talked to you early on, you were like one of the first people to sign up for it. So yeah. you and I got a chance to talk early. 
Uh, and I was just super impressed um, by you kind of just from the beginning. We got on a call. You were like, had your stuff together. Uh-huh. And like, I'm new. Here's what I've done. Here's where I'm going. Like, what advice do you have? You were just like ready to get after it, which I loved. Mm-hmm. And I think is a really good um, trait. And it's obviously, I think, a big reason why, you know, you're successful and are on the podcast here. So. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, all right, so I'll I'll stop talking and let you let you talk. So tell us a little bit about um, you, your home. You know, from Afghanistan. Afghanistan, you're like I want to start something here. Um, like, how, I was gonna say, how did you first get into drones? But obviously, you were in drones in the military. But right. more from a civilian standpoint, how did that process start for you? So, so the funny thing is, I actually used um, drone launch for my first part 107, and I okay. I started it and did like five minutes of it and didn't touch it again for like two years. <laughs> okay. Oh, so you signed up like a while I ago. I signed up a, a hot minute ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, um, and when I got back, I have a friend, a uh, friend named Gail that he's a um, commercial pilot okay. and he lives in Ocala and he said, um, he, he had the idea of, you know, starting something up or just, you know, casually. And, you know, I, I kind of tossed it off at the time, but later I thought about it because what I realized when I got back is, um, see, see with the virus, like there's not a lot of, you know, there's a lot of travel issues right now mm-hmm. and it's just, everything's uncertain. Um, and so I was real nervous cause I, you know, I was like, man, other than drones, like what, what can I do? Cause I was looking at all these jobs on, mm. you know, indeed trying to find something. You're just looking, you're talking about just like any job, any like, job. Yeah. yeah to yeah. get me by. Cause, uh, I was like outside of this little niche, like I'm, I'm kind of like screwed. Like I, <laughs> I don't have, you know, like I'm right back to to people straight out of college or straight out of, you know. Oh, you went to college, you said, right? Like, where, where did you go to school? I went to Flagler College. Okay. And mm-hmm. that's in St. Augustine. St. Augustine. Right? Okay, yes, cool. Yeah. So, um, but I didn't graduate. I, I, I did three years and, okay. and ended up leaving for this, right, uh, right. for this, you know, overseas job. So. Well, what did you study while you were there? Just curious. Uh, criminology and psychology. Okay. Very mm-hmm. right, cool. So, uh, yeah. So just really, I thought about what I like to do and, you know, started the drone idea up and I loved the idea of like having my own company and, mm-hmm putting into it and getting something out is super rewarding. And so that's kind of how it all, it all formed. That's awesome. So, yeah. I, I love what you said about having your own company and getting out what you're putting in. Yeah. That's one thing that I think is really applicable. I mean, whether you're starting a drone business or any business, mm-hmm. like I remember, um, you know, for people who have listened to this for a while, you might know, like I used to work for the FBI for like eight years, right, right out of school doing accounting stuff, right? Yeah. Like not even close to drones. Um, I started to get into drones with them, but then ended up obviously starting drone launch, kind of doing my own thing. But, um, but that's one thing I like, like FBI was cool to work for and like the work was fun, but it's still, you're working for the government right. and it's like your pay is pretty much fixed mm-hmm. and your pay isn't really dependent on, I mean, personal opinion from my experience, your pay is not necessarily dependent on how good you are at your job yeah. or, um, how much value you're bringing necessarily. It's just kind of like, the time you've been there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you get occasional like, oh, hey, David did a good job on this. Here's like a little like, you know, um, recognition bonus. And it's like mm-hmm. 500 bucks. You're like, yeah, that's great. And that's nice. Yeah. But it's not like, um, you know, I could I could kill myself like trying to work really hard at the job and I would get paid the same as the person who's like barely doing the bare minimum. Right. And so it's kind of hard to like be like the only real motivation you have is because you just want to do a good job and for kind of like self satisfaction and you want mm-hmm. to like kind of advance. But when I started doing some, originally I started doing some like consulting on the side, some like accounting consulting. Oh, wow. And I think that's when like the entrepreneur bug like bit me. Cause I'm like, wait a minute, if I like go out and like meet people and like work for them, I can make more money and I can just like keep doing that and making as much money as I put into uh-huh. it. You know, it's just like yeah. that like realization where you're like, oh man, like if I just put work in like, this is going to come out because it's mm-hmm. just like, I don't know why it's just like a light bulb goes off. So yeah, that's cool. uh, I think that's really good at what you say. And it's a good reminder of people like you can't just sit back and mm-hmm. things will happen. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And that being said too, it's not like, like I was getting so frustrated in the beginning because I have a lot of friends that are, are real estate agents and I was focusing more on the real estate to start. Um, and I, I thought, all right, I'm just going to hit up, you know, all these people that I know cause you know, I'm a local and it's going to be real easy. And it's just, it, it took, you know, two months of, I didn't make a dime and I was, I spent like, I don't even know, like a good amount of money on, you know, drones, equipment, sure, insurance, everything. And I was like, I should have had a job by now. Like, this is embarrassing. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, like I was, you know, I was praying about it really hard and stuff too, but all of a sudden the floodgates came open and I was like overwhelmed with just work. It was awesome. crazy. So, so, well, let's talk about that. I yeah. mean, I think that's good to get into. And it's so funny. It's almost, it's almost like you hear the same story every time, at least when people are just starting out. They're just like, 
I mean, I just recorded an episode right before this where it was like, I was reaching out to people. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere. Like, um, like it, I was hitting this roadblock. I offered to do this free work. People didn't want that. People didn't yeah. want, you know, and it's like, and then someone said yes. And then I didn't hear back for four weeks and then they called me back and then, and then it like starts to snowball. So I think yeah. that's, um, really good thing for people to see is like, you know, you might be, and I said this before, it's like almost like trying to push a boulder that's standing still. It's like a lot of effort at first with very little movement, but then once you can get it moving, you can push it a lot easier and it's rolling a lot faster. Mm -hmm. So take us through, I guess, those two months. Like what did you do to get the first client? So the first thing I did was, you know, building, it it was funny because right when I, I was actually kind of bummed, right when I did all the initial stuff, you came out or I, I saw your uh, course come out. Okay. I was like, dang it, man. I, <laughs> like everything you did, I was like, oh, I just did that and I could have done it differently. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, I j- just completed that and I, the hardest part of oh, starting out was just, I didn't know where to go to, to get contacts. And I, I found some Facebook pages mm-hmm. of just guys that are, you know, starting out, I just was Googling stuff. And one guy said that he, he started um, a free 360, or 3D Zillow home tour mm-hmm. with each of his, each of his packages for you know the, the coronavirus because people don't want to come to your house mm-hmm. for these open houses. I was like, man, that's a good idea. So I got on Zillow. I found like 300 of the top rate agents in the area. Sent it out. I had this beautiful email. I'm like, man, this is gonna be this is gonna be sick. Like, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna get some you know <laughs> some business from this. And like, I did it in stages 50 at a time, and not one person replied. Oh, wow. And I'm like, dang it. That's got to be so demoralizing. It was. And, you know, when it's, you, we talked about being personable, and I mm-hmm. think that's a big part is they just see, you know, they see all these ads all the time and mm-hmm. flyers. and You just get, like, numb to them. Numb. Yeah. So I started doing direct messaging mm-hmm. and just kind of saying what I do, you know, what m- makes me stand out more. I did, like, you know, the veteran aspect and, like, the drone, you know, yep. overseas. And that's what that's when it started clicking with people. Mm, that's awesome. So, now yeah. let's let's get some more details here. So, okay. So when you say you're doing direct messaging, are you is this Instagram, Facebook? What are you talking about? Um, both. I even did a little on LinkedIn, uh, but mainly mainly Instagram and Facebook. Now these texts or the video or or how are you uh, doing it? I've I've just been doing it with texts for okay. now. Nice. Yeah, but I want to do the videos. But but the fact that it was like personalized to yeah. them probably instead of. Um, because I'm assuming the email you wrote before was kind of like more like a template type right. thing where it kind of went out to a mass group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, that's awesome. So, so hey, if you're listening, you know, pull over and write some notes. Like personal touch matters. I like oh, yeah. people, and we talk about this you know, in the course. I feel like I'm talking about some blue in the face. It's like, and, and it's like obvious. You're going to be like, okay, David, that's so stupid. I know that. But like people don't put it to practice. Like, People will not work with you unless they trust you and they like you and they know you. It's everybody mm-hmm. says no like and trust, but it's like so true. I mean, if you just don't know who this person is and they're contacting you, it just feels like annoying. Like, oh, why is it? But if they're like a person, like if the if you or you're humanized, right? Like, oh, it's a real person. I know a guy. I, I like real estate. I listen to this podcast called Bigger Pockets. Yeah, and, I know that. No, you yeah. know Bigger Pockets. That's okay. awesome. So this guy on there, Brandon Turner. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's the host. He says with every offer he puts in on a house, he includes a picture of himself, like in his letter. He'll put make a letter to like uh, offer on a property. And he puts in a photo of him and his family and just says like, hey, I'm Brandon. This is my family. Here's who I am. I'm a local investor and yeah. I love your property. You know, and he talks about it, right? And he's like, literally, he's like, I've offered less money than other people and I've still um, gotten the sale okay. because like I'm a person to them now. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I think that's a really good lesson that you're like telling the people that, you know, yeah. that worked. Lesson that's really learned. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so like uh, you, you sent out, you started reach doing some direct reach out. What was your first client that hit? My first client was, was someone I knew, uh, originally that's pretty, pretty good realtor in my area. And they had a home and she actually said, she said, um, I called three other people and you were the first one to pick up. Mm. And I was like, man, you could have called me first. <laughs> and, but, you um, knew, and you knew this person too? I knew her, yeah. yeah, yeah. And But she said, I, I asked her later, I said, you know, why, why did you choose me for this? Because this was two months later and she's she has a lot of listings. And she said, because you picked up immediately, she said she called two other people and they didn't pick up. Mm-hmm. So that's huge is just being, reaching, you know, answering all your phone calls. Mm-hmm. And and also availability because she had a listing that needed everything's going so fast right now that's mm-hmm. under like 
four hundred grand, mm -hmm. and she's like, they want to get it on the market ASAP. Um, can you be here? I think I don't remember if it was the same day, but I was like, yeah. I, first first job, I'm like, I'll be there like nice and right away. So now, was this a free one or a paid one? That was actually paid. I gave her I gave her a discount for the drone uh, service and. Uh, also, I'm, I've been doing the free 3D tour for everything right now. Okay. So, and when when you're talking about the 3D tour, you're not talking about like a, a video tour. You're talking about like the um, almost like the Matterport esque type of thing. Right. Yeah. The little um, Theta Z, I think, is what I use. Okay. Little little 360 camera. And how much is? Tell us a little bit about that for those that one. You can get two options. I, you know, since we're still growing as a business, I'm I just did the the Theta. I want to say it's the Theta Z. Okay. And it's it's around three hundred dollars, and I went with that. And it's honestly, it's it does everything you need. It's really cool how it works because you just put it somewhere, and then put it at another place that's a line of sight, mm -hmm. and it Zillow does everything for you at the end. You just like throw your arrows up, and yeah. it's easy. So I bet that's a uh, given Matterport a little bit of a run for yeah, its money. Yeah, probably. I haven't even used Matterport, but I've heard it's good. Yeah, um, I, I haven't really used much Matterport. We know people on the podcast who have, and. Um, it can get they have like a service fee and yeah. um, kind of expensive equipment. So well, at least mm -hmm. it sounds like that's a cool solution that's that's worked. Yeah. Um, I think it's funny even the you know you were saying even your friends um, weren't like necessarily jumping at it because if you think about it right like they want they're probably just trying to think like yeah I like this person as my friend but like but this is my business are they going to be the best fit for my business right too so I think you having a good product probably helps you know mm -hmm. like with them trusting you with with being able to do that too. So. Yeah. Um, cool. So that was your first paying gig. How much did you charge for that? Like f that first one? I guess you said you give some of it for free, right? That one, yeah. Normally that one would have been around two ninety nine um, or two ninety five, and I believe I gave it to her for one ninety five. Gotcha. And what did you give her for the? Like what was all included? Did you do photos or anything, or was it like what was what was yeah, the full package? I did uh, full full photos, interior, exterior. Um, I do HDR bracketed photos right now, and I have a editing service that is a really great job too uh helps me save some time and yeah. then i did also the drone photography okay so probably like 12 pictures of the drone and okay you know 20 inside maybe so no video or anything no video on that one okay no. and then um so you have an editing service that will like do some of the photo editing for you yeah and it's like it's pretty cool it's uh do, why you, mind, do you mind sharing with us what it no, is no i don't mind um I mean, I'll even tell you the name if you want it. Yeah, go, yeah, go uh, Editor three two one is who I've been using. There's also a couple others. Uh, Fixer, I know, with a pH fixer, um, and they charge anywhere from like eighty cents to a dollar and a half for a photo. Okay. But they do great jobs. They do window pulls. Um, it's and the one I use does it while you sleep because they're actually based overseas. Uh -huh. And so I just upload it to them wake up in the morning and they're done and it's usually like a 12 hour turnaround. So it's, that's awesome. it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I think that I want to just stress to people that I've heard all the time is like, especially if you're doing real estate and every drone to one K instructor person and everyone that comes on the podcast is in real estate. It's like, if you are not responsive and have super fast turnaround time, like you're basically worthless to a lot of these like yeah. people that are in real estate. Cause they just, everything goes so fast, gets listed. So I think, um, that's another like huge lesson. I think mm -hmm. that sounds like you are tackling pretty well. Yeah. 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 It's been good. So, so you got that first um, person who you kind of knew. So luckily that was like a warm lead. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, and I wanted to comment too. I remember when we talked about, um, you, you had mentioned to us in the group that about the 300, the reaching out to the 300 top realtors and one of our drone to one K instructors or Jeremiah, who's been on the podcast before right. he commented, um, and was like, you know, the and, and Dominic Wilkerson too, and other, they're both like real estate guys. Yeah. And like the problem with that is um, if you're a top realtor in your area, you probably already have a great photographer and maybe a stable of backups, you know yep. what I mean? Oh, yeah. So sometimes that's a hard, uh, like, you know, nut to crack at the beginning. So sometimes you have to go with either other people who their photography or videos, either they don't have videos or their photography sucks or they're just kind of starting out um, or some like, you know, like you like you had kind of how you got into it. So yeah. Um, all right, so that's your first job. So then where did it go from there? From there, it uh, it went word of mouth to a couple of different realtors and then... Through that through that person? Through that same person. Mm -hmm. I, I got uh, a couple of different contacts. And then I also had some other friends that were slowly coming out of the woodwork. Um, now I have like, 
you know, some very nice luxury uh, listings. I even have some possibilities in Charleston, which okay, for cool. me, I'm like, hey, if it's if I can line some things up, I'll I don't care where it's at. Like I'll yeah, I'll give I'll you a go, chance to go travel a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, you know, make a little road trip out of it. And yeah. So um, so yeah, it's just. And then what's funny is I've actually had some some weird jobs pop up since then too that are outside of the real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean I don't know if other people out there get that, but like, oh yeah, I, I've had people be like, hey, you, you know, can you come film me, uh, like bring your drone and come do like me surfing, you know, on the beach and stuff like that, and just oh yeah, yeah, just weird, you know. Had like, they, were they Facebook. offered were they offered to pay you for it? Yeah, I even, I had a uh, photographer reach out that does like little shoots for for kids like like these mermaid portraits okay. and she's like will you do your your drone for the mermaid portrait thing i'm like uh, I, it's a little strange but sure like <laughs> i don't know why i so, laugh it's so hard I yeah guess. it's just weird yeah, but i was actually weird stuff i was envisioning i went to san diego for something uh we're in florida for those of you who are listening central florida and i was in san diego for something and i was you know i hadn't been to california much and so i was down checking out the beach in san diego and I was like, what is happening down here? And I saw, <laughs> I saw this photographer and this woman, like, head to toe, full mermaid, like, get up, right? Like, yeah. the whole thing, everything. And she's, like, on the rocks, like, doing st- – and I was just laughing. I was just thinking, I didn't even know this was a thing. So yeah. I guess, I guess it is. Um, I don't know why I find that so funny. I might do, like, a merman <laughs> – start a merman company. That'd be cool. I <laughs> uh, love it. So did you end up doing that? I haven't done it yet, no. Okay, are you going to? Yet. Uh, I haven't heard from her yet. She was actually, man, I'm, I was like so hungry for everyone out there. Like I had basically no other option because I wasn't, I, the deployments were really just starting to get to me because I, I'm engaged. You know, I have family. I got a brother that's having triplets on the way. And oh, I'm, wow. like, I'm like, man, I just want to be home. Like, yeah. Um, so now, this is your was, family from the St. Augustine area as well? In yeah. Florida? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, so we were just like, I was like, I have to make this work. And that's mm-hmm. why I've been so hungry for it. But, uh, yeah, now I completely forgot what you asked. No, no, I was, we were talking about uh, your new merman company that you're going to start. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that hungry. No, <laughs> no, but I asked if you were, you know, you said you were getting some like off, the, oh, yeah, a little sorry. bit more off the wall type of jobs outside of real estate. Right, right. So I was reaching out to um, like my neighborhood. We have a little Facebook page and I was like, hey, anyone, you know, that needs any realtors in the in the neighborhood and actually got some potential contacts from that. Um, been going to happy hours for realtors okay, and just showing up with some flyers. I made some from Canva. Okay. That nice. turned out really well. Um, so just, just things like that. Just market yourself like the m- most budget friendly way you can. Right. Yep. That's what yep. I'm doing. So it sounds like, uh, yeah, I mean, again, for people listening, kind of, this is what you have to do is you just have to get pe- the more people who know what you do, the higher the odds are of you getting work. I mean, if, if people know you as, Oh, you're the, you know, whatever you want to be like the drone guy. Right. Mm-hmm. Or, for you, you're kind of doing a little bit more all-encompassing real estate. Like, oh, this is the real estate uh, photo and drone guy, right? right? So the more people that can associate you with that and next time they have a listing, if you pop in their head, like, that's what you want. The only way to do that is to get out and meet people, you know, offer to do stuff for free at first, like yep. all the stuff that you're doing. So I think I think that's really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, what's one of, like, the weirdest, I mean, I don't know, the mermaid thing was pretty cool <laughs> yeah. and the surfing thing was funny. Are there any other kind of, like, odd jobs? I did one, and it's, you know, it hasn't been that long, so it's kind of scary that, like, you just get all these weird, but it's cool. It, you know, makes it different. But mm-hmm. I did have one. It's kind of a sensitive topic that revolves or involves a, um, you know, some le- legality things that I can't, like, I'm not supposed to sure. talk about it. Yeah. But basically, an entity hired me to to watch over another entity <laughs> and do, like, an investigative thing. where Legally. Just, legally, yeah. Legally, yeah. Everything was legal. You know, airspace was all good and just... All I was doing is just monitoring, you know, a situation and then for for I guess potential court situations, I was just taking photography and video. Okay. So, okay. Um but that was that was cool because I don't know, I just I can't I don't want to get myself in no, no, trouble. Don't don't only yeah, share what you only want just to share very, what you're comfortable sharing. It was very interesting people to work with, to say the least. And I feel like I don't know, it was just I can't really say a lot about it to no, like describe fine. it, which yeah, sucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so let's just say, so you've gotten some other requests, random requests, other than the real estate. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but, you know, hey, at least I can kind of keep it interesting sometimes, too, if you're trying to build that. Yeah. But I think doing what you're doing and kind of, you know, specializing in something is good. And, um, you know, when you're first starting out, real estate seems to be a really easy way for people to kind of get in the door with some stuff and mm-hmm. get making some money. And then a lot of times people expand into, into different areas and stuff, yeah. too. So. Um, 
Cool. So when was your first, so, so you started making some, some money and you're charging for these jobs. Um, you started in May. When did you break the like 1K mark for a month? Um, when I did break it, it was immediate, which is funny, but it took two, um, like two months. So it was, it wasn't that long ago. It was like July 20th, around July okay. 20th. So yeah. for July. Cool. Yeah. So we're, and we're, so we're in August. So you started mm -hmm. in May and by July you had a 1K month. Yeah. That's awesome. And then I'm assuming you're still growing from, from here. Yeah. It's still, still growing. Um, it's like we were talking about just kind of like domino effect because one person tells another person and just being professional, you know, is, is really big. And I've kind of been going like working myself a little too hard. I feel like, like some uh -huh. of them, some of these realtors get carried away, man. They'll be uh -huh. like, Hey, we want you to retouch, you know, this mailbox, this chip on this mailbox. And, and I want you to do this. And I, like, at first I was like, okay, cause I just want their business. Sure. But now I'm, I'm getting yeah, like set some boundaries. Yeah. I'm just, I've learned that. That's honestly like a big lesson that I learned is, uh, Cause my time, I was just stressing myself out over yeah. it. a job that should take two hours. I've just taken like 20 hours, you know, doing oh, something geez. stupid, but, um, yeah, so it's, well, and I think one thing is as your business grows, probably you can then be probably a little bit choosier about true. your clients and yeah. be like, Hey, this guy keeps complaining about mailboxes. Like, I'm just going to take his <laughs> yeah. jobs if you want. Yeah. But, um, but no, that's, that's cool. I feel like it's, you know, that's really cool, especially for everybody out else who's listening to this, who's maybe at the beginning to like mm -hmm. hear your experience. Um, especially since you're like still kind of on the front end, which I right. think is really, really neat. Um, so I guess if you're, if let's do a little exercise, you are, uh, somebody else is in your shoes, right? And they're, they're about to start, they're listening to this and they're like, oh man, it sounds like me. I just want to be home or I just want to do my own thing. Or mm -hmm. maybe they have had like a job that they don't love. And they're like, it sounds incredible to fly drones on the side. Like I know yeah. I have a friend who's like a radiology tech and he works four days a week, but then he's got three days a week, totally free. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's like, so let's say you're somebody like that and you want to, and you're starting fresh. Um, and they're like, Spencer, I heard you on the podcast. You sound like a credible person and you know what you're doing. What, uh, what should I do? Like, where should I start and what should I learn how to do? I would say not trying to plug this in either, but, the, uh, start with, start with, uh, well, first of all, getting your part 107 and I would do the course that Drone Launch offers, it, it has everything, like everything you need to do, like like logos. That's why I was so bummed that I already did like a, a good bit of it to start out, but um, it's got everything you need for a foundation. Uh, SEO is gonna, you know, gonna be huge. Get someone that knows what they're doing with that, but it talks about that in the course too. Um, just, just being hungry for it, having enough. I know if you're doing it on the side, it's gonna be a little different yeah. managing your time, but uh, just be patient as well and and just keep chugging along at it and it will as long as you're as long as you're professional and you do a good product and you're you're chipping away at it you're gonna be eventually get some good business out yeah. of it i feel like just be patient i think that's a really important thing for people to hear is like the persistence aspect of it like yeah. you only people who don't make money with this are the people who uh, just like give up right, right. Like, if you are dedicated to like learning to be good at something and putting yourself out there and meeting people like it will happen for you it's like i mean i don't want to say it's guaranteed but if you continue to do it like it, it is guaranteed you right know what i mean like if you know well, I, I hate cheesy quotes but it's true it's like you know you only fail if you quit kind of mm -hmm. thing right and so i think you're a good lesson of that and you know it's, I, that's true with any business really i mean i was yeah. talking on i think maybe it was the last episode or when i first started drone launch when you were you reminded me when you said you sent a thing out to like 300 realtors yeah. and you got zero responses. Yeah. Like when I first started drone launch, I was very naive into like how business and marketing worked. Mm -hmm. And so I gave away a drone. I gave away a Phantom 4. It's when the Phantom 4, the original one first oh, came wow. out. It was like 2016. Nice. And I was like, all right. And I didn't have a ton of money. I was like doing this on the side. I remember I was a poor government accountant. Okay. <laughs> right. And, uh, and I was like, all right, cool. So I bought this drone. I did a giveaway. I got like 5,000 email addresses from a giveaway. It was one of those things where you're like, kind of, we do giveaways like this now where mm -hmm. if you uh, share it and somebody else signs up with your link, you get like extra bonus entries. So I got 5,000 emails, but I, I, real, I didn't realize this at the time, but when you do giveaways, those aren't necessarily like the best leads because people are so free stuff. They're not yeah. looking to buy from you, you know? Right. Um, so, so I did that. I got 5,000 emails and I thought, oh man, like, like you're, um, this is perfect. Yeah. I'm going to be rich, you know? <laughs> and then I... Uh, I worked for months and months and months putting together the part one of seven course. I mean, like killed myself. I spent like probably over 10 grand on video editing. I mean, I was like, 
And I, but I thought, oh, all I got to do is turn the switch on yeah. and I'm going to be, it's, money's going to be pouring in. Right. So I sent the email out to 5,000 people and, uh, and I was like, I was like, guys, this is a life, you know, once in a lifetime deal. I'm discounting it to $99 or something like that. And, uh, and I thought, okay, like probably, you know, 50% of the people are going to open the email, which <laughs> if you're in email marketing, like if you have 20%, that's like great, you know, mm-hmm. what I mean? especially for people who don't know you. Um, but dude, two people bought out of 5,000 emails Jeez. and they bought it for $99. And even then they're like, this is kind of expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, this is great. So I was like, you know, probably 15 grand down. Uh, and I had made uh, two $100 sales. And so I was like, well, this is pretty demoralizing. Jeez. But, um, you know, I didn't know anything about marketing. I did, I, again, I had, I wasn't thinking at all about no like or trust. Like the guy who was working with me or help me set up my website. Like, mm-hmm. Maybe you should send out an email first, like introducing yourself. And like, what is it? I was like, no, I don't want to do that. They'll unsubscribe. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's, that's, that's the worst way to think because people just won't buy. Um, anyway, so all that to say, it's like perseverance. I, I couldn't agree more with you. Yeah. That's like probably one of the top things because you just have to figure it out and figure out how to do it and mm-hmm. learn from people and listen to this podcast or reach out to people who have been on the podcast yeah. and just keep going. That's helpful too. Yeah. So where do you see things going for you? Where do you see things going for for you, uh, like going forward, do you want to stay in real estate or are you hoping to branch out into other areas? What are you thinking? Branch out to Merman's, man. <laughs> that's, where, that's where it's headed. Hey guys, listen, I got this hot new market that, yeah. you know, I don't want to talk about on the podcast. Yeah. It's, it's not uh, an overwhelming market for sure. <laughs> uh, no, I, I do want to do some like roof inspections. You know, being in Florida, you know how it is. With, we got two hurricanes you coming. Or, yeah, we got them on the way. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, one's, I don't know if it's going, where it's going, but yeah. Um, so I want to get into the roof inspection stuff. I want to do the, the course for that. Um, but I also want to focus on real estate because I do enjoy it. It's, yeah. it's cool. You know, it's, it's just neat to, to see the finished product mm-hmm. and provide that product and like be proud of it. Yeah. And, um, so I just want to, my goal is to really, I, I want to get to where I'm at at least seven bookings seven, seven listings a week okay yeah and i feel like that's pretty doable in the future but um that's my goal for right now yeah uh, just like at least you know one a day would be awesome yeah i think that's i mean it's definitely doable you yeah because yeah. you know here's the thing if somebody else has done it that means it's possible for you right. to do it too right and so like yeah you know, look at people like jeremiah oshwald or, or fred you know light mm-hmm. or whoever you know, these guys were they're booked booked up like crazy now again they've been doing this for years so they've really put the time in but right um it's definitely possible so i think that's i think that's really cool and, and um it's a good goal too um so if people want to uh you know i i, I always like to give out people's contact information against their will on the mm-hmm. podcast so it's like um because a lot of times people want to reach out and ask like oh how did you do this how did you do that yeah um and again if people reach out to you you know it's up to you to answer but no. <laughs> um but if people do no. want to ask you questions or whatever uh, is there like a good way to get a hold of you? Like, or what's your, what's a good social media? Maybe. Yeah, either um, Facebook or Instagram would be good. Um, it's it's uh, oh gosh, I gotta think of my handle. No, it's okay. For my, what Instagram or yeah Facebook? for Instagram, might have to edit on. I so. think it's okay. It's I think it's at it's arrow at, underscore drone, right? Well, it's at arrow drone solutions, but one has an LLC and one doesn't. Let's take a look. So that's. <laughs> So I should we, probably remember that. Right? <laughs> that's why we do it recording. Yeah. Uh, hold on. It takes all the stress out. And make, I need to make a note at minute 32 to do some editing. 32. All right. Um, uh, arrow. It's Arrow Drone oh, okay. Solutions, but I don't know if it's got yes. the LLC. So, okay. So you can say this. Yeah. On Instagram, it's Arrow Drone Solutions LLC. And then on Facebook, Arrow Drone Solutions. This is good because I need to know to rattle that off to people too. Yeah. Wait. Ask. Is yours one that says always open? Oh, wait. This isn't you, is it? Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, dude. Always open? Oh, sorry. I think that was just your um, your hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, gotcha. So I was looking for the logo. I didn't recognize it. Okay. It's just, so yeah, Facebook is just Aerodrone Solutions. Instagram is Aero Jones Solutions LLC. LLC. Is okay. that because it was taken on Instagram? I don't know. I right. think I just wanted my LLC in there. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Somewhere yeah. More official. Um, all right. So I'll, I'll re-ask okay. it. Right. All right. So Spencer, for people who want to find out, you know, more about you or maybe ping you with a bunch of questions, like where's the best place to look at your work or to get a hold of you? Uh, the best place would probably be Facebook or Instagram. It's Instagram. It's at 
Aero Drone Solutions LLC. Aero is like A E R O. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Facebook's just Aero Drone Solutions. Just all one word, no LLC. All, yeah, cool. all one word, no LLC. And we'll link that up um, in our uh, show notes. So if you go to dronelaunchacademy.com slash podcast, just with with no S, podcast, um, you should be able to find this episode uh, in season three, and we'll, we'll link it all up there. So, well, I'm excited to hear about your you crushing it and getting out there, and um, I think it's a really good example for people to listen to uh, about sticking with it and not getting discouraged when they hit a wall of no's. All right, you got, what, three, essentially 300 no's. <laughs> um, so I just love that story about you're just like, you know what? Hey, listen, reach out, see why that didn't work, and move on and keep going. And then, like mm-hmm. you said, all of a sudden, boom, it hit. Yeah. So I think it's a great lesson for people to learn. So um, thanks so much for coming on, and I uh, really appreciate you being here. Yeah, cool. thank you. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Spencer. Again, um, I loved having him on the show. It was actually one of the first um, in-person podcasts we had done. So we were there in the studio, podcasting studio together at my office. Uh, really enjoyed hanging out with Spencer, getting to know him a little bit more hearing about his story, how he went from, you know, being working the mil- for the military, being in the military, um, getting out, um, doing some civilian stuff, and then getting into starting his own drone business. So hope that inspired you. Maybe you're out there and, and you're a veteran or you know some people um, that share some similarities with Spencer's story. Um, so just hope these are inspiring to you all and give you guys some good juice and some ideas. Remember, if you listen to this all the way through, uh, definitely click on the link to get some free prizes. So just answer one question to show us that you listen to the show and uh, enter to win some free stuff. Remember, swag, coaching call with Spencer, um, and or a free course. So get in on that. Again, check the email that announced this podcast if you're listening on audio. But if you're watching on YouTube, uh, the link should be below. So you have until, I believe it was February 2nd or so, to get in on that. All right, everyone, thank you again so much for listening. We'll see you next week on the Drone to 1K podcast.